Detroit in 313. We're back. Stephen Will talking that Detroit Lions football before we get going. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and do not forget the bell icon so you don't miss any of our new content. Steve, what are we talking, man? We're going to be talking about Craig Reynolds. Um, when I say the name, it's not sexy, but we're going to sprinkle it up a little bit. You know, I think he's in deep shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, just going to be I Just think, getting uh, right to yeah, it, I hey, see. I'm not here to paint, paint the corners, right? I'm just bringing a fastball right down the middle. Here it is. So, gri- grip it and rip it if you can. But uh, Sione Vaki's coming in here, William, and he's coming into training camp. He, he's turning heads. Uh, he's catching a lot of people's attention. So we're going to be talking about Sione Vaki. Uh, Craig Reynolds, um, what's going to happen here? What do you, what do you think is going to go down? Well, uh, man, I was uh, trying to keep it conservative when we <laughs> first, uh, signed uh, Sione Vaki, and then I was going to try to keep it conservative on this podcast, but I think you've thrown that out of the window. So non-politicians answers. Oh, wow. Uh, fr- think- hey, hit that subscribe <laughs> button now. Cause this does not happen often. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm, I think I am 100% with you, man. He's in a lot of trouble. And <laughs> I, I don't even know just what team carries four running backs. Let's start there. And it's just a position versatility. You know, he he's a guy that's going to be a special teams animal, right? Um, they said that he absolutely dominated r- rookie minicamp. What does that mean? Okay, like, uh, let's, let's not make it more than what it is. But they said that. He looked great in, in, in rookie minicamp. He he looked the part. He looked like everything that they suspected that he was. So, uh, Craig, uh, I've, that's, those are words that I've never heard uh, in correlation with Craig Reynolds being dominant. So, yeah, yeah it's uh he, that leads to me that he's a, he's he probably is in trouble. I like Craig Reynolds, man. He's a uh, he's a tough, gritty guy. Um, he's a guy that is obviously a team guy. I remember going back to – I don't remember exactly what game it was, but goal line package came in. We were up, uh, and David Montgomery normally comes in with that group, and Craig Reynolds went to go run off of the field, and David Montgomery told him, no, nah, man, stay out there. Get your touchdown. So, I mean, I he's obviously – I think that was the sh- – no, it wasn't the Chicago game, but I remember it as well. It was right in front of us in the end zone we sit in. Yeah, so it's like, man, he's obviously a team guy. Obviously, the team likes him. So it's tough, man. It's not that I just don't want it to feel like I'm cheering against him or I don't like him or it's anything that he's done. This is what the NFL is. They're constantly recruiting guys at your position that could potentially be better at a minimum that is that's going to compete with you um, for your position. So, yeah, when we start talking about his versatility, man, I, I don't know how Craig Reynolds survives this. Yeah, I, I'm not cheering against Craig Reynolds. Um, I do remember that game. I can't remember exactly which game it was. And I remember a game. It was one of the playoff games where it was fourth and one from like the one yard line. Was Mm -hmm. it the Rams game or the um, Tampa Bay game in the playoffs where I was like, I saw Craig Reynolds run out there. I was like, all right, fourth and one Craig's out there. Like, are we doing a QB sneak? They want a bigger running back in there to give Jared Goff a a push. Like, I don't know what's going to happen here. Boom. Hand off Craig Reynolds touchdown. Mm -hmm. Like, the, yeah, I'm not cheering against Craig, but uh, I think he's got his work cut out for him. Like you said, teams don't carry four running backs. It's usually three. So here's the question. What are they going to list Sione Vake, Vake as on game day? To me, it doesn't matter. It's just a question. Like, this is a guy that could play wide receiver, running back, safety, uh, maybe nickel. You could put him in on punt return, kick return. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him in some fullback packages because he's got a running back's body. He's yeah, got some I, running back versatility. So that's a Ben Johnson wrinkle. He could be yeah. throwing in there and saying, Hey, I'm going to throw out Gibbs and Vaki or, or Montgomery and Vaki. I'm going to put them both in the backfield. I don't know. On third and three, who, who are you handing the ball to here? Is it going to Vaki? Is it going to Montgomery? Uh, it, it, he's a nice weapon to have. And, and Craig Reynolds, if, if I'm being honest, uh, I think we're looking at maybe a special teams role, possibly. I, I don't know. It really just depends. Yeah. Uh, I, I just. Craig Reynolds plays special teams. He does a decent job, man. And I just don't know if we can just keep him just to be a special teamer, though, and then have four running backs listed in our depth chart. I just just don't know. But, again, exactly what you said. I will say that Sione Vaki ran a 15-minute 40. Oh, and that will. And, well, wait wait a second. (laughs) It's not bad. It's not bad, though. Okay, maybe it wasn't 15 (laughs) minutes. Maybe it was 10 minutes. But – he, he ran a slow 40, but if when I, once I start doing some more digging, he had because they do the GPS now on these players and he had a 23 miles per hour GPS time 
You know, so he's a football guy. He's a guy that shows up on the football field. His agility shows up on the football field, elusiveness, power, strength. Um, so the the 40 time doesn't even shine me away. When he first got drafted, I wasn't as worried because I was like, mm, he's going to be ex- uh, exclusively probably a special teamer gadget play guy. But the more I watch him and dig into him and, and find out more about him, he's better than I thought he was. And obviously it yet to remain to be seen to hit an NFL field and see what he can do. But yeah, Craig, um, yeah, you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to really, really step it up if you're going to hold this young guy off. But it, it kind of feeds into that thing that we've been talking about. We started it last year and we're really going to be doing it this year. We're going to have guys that if they get cut, they're going to go get picked up by other teams. And if Craig Reynolds gets cut, his NFL career is not over. No, someone's going to be calling that phone immediately. Someone's going to be blowing that phone up and, and picking them up, man. So, again, this is no shade on Craig Reynolds, but I got to agree. Um, I think that he is in a world of trouble. Um, I just hope that it isn't one of those divisional things if he does get cut. Man, I always worry about that, and I think about, man, I just uh, – uh, Tanya, yeah, Robert Tanya um, leaving – um, and bouncing around, you know, that the NFC North. Um, DeAndre Swift going out there to Chicago Bears. It's like it always is in the back of my mind, man. Those guys know exactly what we do. They know our terminology. And I wonder, actually, I don't wonder. I know that that's a factor when they're bringing these guys in. I'm not going to say that any of these teams are exclusively bringing guys in just because they have a history with other teams. But if I'm choosing between two guys that are fairly even and I'm like, man, we play this team twice a year. It'd be nice to have, you know, some inside information on what, what it's like over there. So I don't know, man. I hope that it doesn't stay, like I said, in division. But if we lose them, Craig, I think you'll definitely be getting picked up, man. You'll, you'll still be getting paychecks and able to feed your family. At the end of the day, I will never cheer against someone who's a Detroit Lion. But what I am cheering for is this competition that's going to go down this summer. Uh, him, Vaki are probably two of the guys I'm going to be paying attention to on offense as well as Manu. And then mm-hmm. on defense, you know, I'm looking at pretty much all everyone on defense that we've added. You know, our whole secondary is brand new. Yeah. But just real quick, can you just imagine a player as versatile as Vaki and Ben Johnson, the wizard, getting his hands on him and the different things he can do offensively? Like the thought of him as a fullback is not sexy. But like I said a minute ago, you make the defense wonder. You're keeping them on their toes. Like, hey, I got two guys in the backfield who's getting the ball. One of them's a decoy. One of them's going to get the rock. Is Vaki? Do I like his matchup against this linebacker if I send Vaki on a on a passing route because he played some wide receiver in high school and had I think like twelve hundred yards receiving as in high, and I get it, it was high school, but still he's athletic enough to make a catch for five six yards. I'm not saying he's taking the top off and he's going to you know burn past defensive backs, but if there's a matchup against a linebacker when he's lined up in the backfield, there's a lot of different things Ben Johnson can exploit, and, and I'm going to be looking for all of it because. I think he's probably the biggest weapon we have. Now, he might not be the most athletic player on our team, but he's probably the most versatile. He's one of those guys, man, that I think that we'll look back and be like, man, he made that one little play here or there that affected the game in a win-loss scenario. You know what I mean? Like, like We talked about it before, and I, I said that it was a hot take, and now that I really – kind of sit back really it's not even a super hot take but i think he's going to win us a couple of football games and at a minimum he's going to win us an important football game somewhere down the road by blocking a punt returning a punt you know having a gadget touchdown on a fake punt or something he's just a guy that offers that that just being a football player right so i i think that man I, i'm excited to see him out here um He's one of those guys that's growing on me. I already liked him. We both mocked. Was, I think he was the only player that we both mocked in our mock drafts. Yep. So already liked him. Already expected him to be a Detroit Lion because I had heard the uh, the buzz about the Detroit Lions liking him as well. But uh, now the more I hear about him, just the more and more I'm getting excited. Can't wait to be down there at training camp and see him live, you know, and see what he looks like with uh, pads on moving around with some of these veteran guys. But, um, yeah, Craig. Step it up, buddy. Um, you got a young guy nipping at your nipping at your heels, man. William, I'm not here to question your baseball knowledge, and I know you have no idea where I'm going to go with this. I have no idea. <laughs> Zero. The Detroit That's Tigers they score goals, right? <laughs> yeah, they score goals and <laughs> they play with pucks and uh, <laughs> soccer balls. The Detroit Tigers used to have a player by the name of Andrew Romine, who was 
known as being a, a utility man. Mm-hmm. And at one point, I think it was in the 2017 season when the Tigers were pretty much down and out. They tried to get um, Andrew Romine to play every single position on the baseball field in one game. And if I'm, if Matt, this is off the top of my mind, uh, off my memory, guys, we've done no research on this. It's just something that popped in my head. I believe he got eight out of nine. Wow. And, and if I'm not mistaken, I think he missed like right field or something like that. So I'm comparing him to Vaki. Mm-hmm. Just can he play a game where maybe he catches a pass, maybe throws a pass, maybe rushes for, for a couple yards. Maybe he makes a couple tackles. Maybe he's on punt return kick return. Like I want to see him do everything in one single game. Um, I think he's the only player on our team that, that I could probably say that about like how many different positions can I put this guy at in one game? Is it seven, eight? Like, I, I don't know, man, there's a lot of different tricks we could pull out of our bag with him. Yeah. It's a uh, poor Malcolm Rodriguez, man. Malcolm Rodriguez had his like <laughs> just one season of just being phenomenal, man. I'm playing linebacker. I'm playing a full back role. Like, man, it's it's so special what I'm doing. I caught a pass and now Sivoni Vaki is going to come in and be like, yeah, man, I play receiver, running back, de- de- defensive back, special team where I throw the ball. Like, well, what are you what are you talking about? He may kick an extra point. I don't know. I'm not putting anything past this. Why man. not? Why not? <laughs> you know, hey, maybe we're up 20 points and. Hey, coach, you want, want me to go in there and boot one through the uprights for you real quick? Like, like, <laughs> yeah, I can do that, too. Yeah. You know? well, give, give, Bates a, give Bates a rest. I'm going to keep speaking that into, into existence. A couple more weeks, we should be able to find out about that. I believe June 18th is the end of the uh, UFL. So yes, sir. something else to keep your eyes on. But, guys, just a quick little conversation today about uh, Sione Vaki, Craig Reynolds, something to watch for in camp. Sione Vaki's turning some heads. Looked mm. good in minicamp. Had a hell of – not a hell of a combine, but – a lot of teams are interested in him with his versatility. So leave some stuff in the comments. We'll have a little conversation. Hit that like button. If you're new here, stick around, subscribe. We'll be back later with another show. Peace.